Von Fry, legendary badass, not shy, telling you how it is, Von Fry will die. Well, fellas, I've been avoiding this movie for some time. It's called Gravity. It came out like last fall. And I saw the TV adverts and I thought, what, maybe two hours of Sandra Bullock complaining in space. That's what I thought. And unfortunately, what I thought was going to be bad wasn't as bad as what actually came out. Yes, guys, this is a rant review of Gravity, and it's not a favorable one. I'm going to tell you why the movie sucks. I give it two out of four stars. It's disappointing. And I'm not going to make any kind of declaration saying that your opinion is your opinion, my opinion is my opinion. Obviously, this is my opinion, but uh, take heed some notice. I have a bachelor's in film studies, and maybe I know a few things about science as well. So, uh, maybe my opinion matters to me, and maybe it should matter to you as well. Uh, it's an informed opinion. I'm not just another guy blabbing on YouTube who works a day job uh, doing laundry somewhere, washing dishes, okay? So, uh, let me get on with this. Our movie starts out, we have Hotshot Matt, George Clooney, wheeling about the Hubble telescope, I believe that's what it was, just wasting uh, ga gas pressure in his uh, what mobile suit thing. Uh, yeah, don't remember the technical term for that, but he's got the mobility thing going, and he's just wheeling around, even though it has limited fuel. So uh, that's already weird. And he's talking about how he's uh, so pretty, and he's a great guy, all this other crap, and here I am now, I'm on like the highest difficulty on the exercise bike, so bear with me. Hopefully I kill over. And Sundra Bullock's working on it. She's a doctor, not necessarily... A, an astronaut portrayed. She's a mission specialist working on the telescope. They have a little chat, and then, oh no, we've got uh, some incoming debris from a, was it a Chinese satellite or a Russian satellite? I think they said Russian satellite. It got taken out with a missile. So they were taking out possibly a spy satellite. Maybe it was about to hit Earth's orbit and crash. The U.S. has had to do this before, too. And it's kind of a measure saying, you guys can launch missiles up there, so can we. And in reality, this chain reaction, this is where the movie, to me, starts on a bad foot. I mean, we've got this interesting sustained shot that, for one, I, and I don't know the dynamics of the background on this. I know it's possible. It can be done with computers. I think it very well was, but we have about 20 minutes of a one sustained shot at the beginning of the movie. I was hoping they were gonna stick with that horse. It got you 20 minutes, go longer. I know a lot of it had to be done with computers because once they got inside Sandra's helmet, by the way, her character's name's Ryan. Not that that matters at all. Sandra Bullock is playing the role of Sandra Bullock. This is not really acting. There's no juxtaposition between a calm, regular state, growth as a character. Uh, sure, the one scenario in... She had more of a character in Speed, and it's almost the same movie. Because all these movies that are these purported disaster films work so much better when you have build-up and suspense... You establish the characters, you give a shit, they have some kind of goals in life. This bitch wouldn't be out there in the first place. Because the only thing we know about her is she has some psychological hang-up about the death of her daughter. So she wouldn't have passed the psych evaluation. She didn't act like she had six months or more training. So could they not find somebody qualified? Oh wait, she looks like Sandra Bullock, let's get her. So... Matt and her are the only two alive when this chain reaction of satellite debris comes flying in, destroying everything around them. It's like bullets flying through the air. 
and it's completely impossible because as I said these missiles go up and destroy satellites and there's no chain reaction the same way you take out a satellite is with a missile it doesn't disperse the debris and what's it hit other satellites what are they full of explosives and shit because where's the chain reaction come from suppose it hits something it slows down end of movie it, there's no way it gets vaporized and destroyed and sinks the earth it, it doesn't make any sense and, and I don't even think that they're in the same orbit as where they do the spacewalks and everything it's like further degrees up and, and away from all of it a, a lot of things are conveniently within reach they have an uh, international space station within eyesight it's been hit by uh, the chain reaction to bullshit so everybody in there's dead um, no they, this was like a Russian Soyuz capsules one of them had a chute deployed in the middle of space for God knows why another one they had escaped so this one it's it can't be used for entry but they're going to try to pilot it over to the Chinese station but before they can do that they have to actually get there so they have you know padded out crawl over to the place then they run into some more oh no uh, my grip is so amazing with these gloves <laughs> I mean, it's hard to keep a straight face with the like all of a sudden Sandra Bullock is an acrobat in space because there's zero gravity she can grab onto anything you know she's a pro just about she, at times she maneuvers through zero G uh, with such effortless precision that you just know she's on wires and they, so they come crashing into this thing and all of a sudden they get caught up in the parachute cords and Matt is like you gotta let go of me they're, they're holding on to each other he's like you gotta let me go I'm, I'm pulling you so he, he, he untethers let's go and and then he drifts off has a little bit more communique over the radio and that's about it for Matt but couldn't she just have gone like this and pulled him towards her I mean just he, he weighs nothing and you go like this and now he goes flying up to you and then he pulls you in problem solved so of course hot shot had to sacrifice I thought going into the movie that they were going to be, you know, talking about life and death, and there was going to be some real existential knowledge trade-off, and then eventually he'd have to make some sacrifice so that she could live. That's the movie I thought I was getting into. But nope, wrote that off pretty quick, because we just got to fill the rest of this movie with happenstance explosion bullshit. So, can't use this capsule because shoot deployed. She heads off to the Chinese. The, it do, the capsule doesn't even have fuel in it. Again, bullshit. At this point, she's giving up on life. And then, oh no, Matt comes back. He's like, yo, it's quite improbable. Let me tell you a story. He's all about, I've got stories. <laughs> I have a backstory. It involves telling stories about Mardi Gras. And you notice at this scene that... The lights are much brighter, there's no uh, breath visual condensation, none, none of the telltale signs of anything going on. He opens the hatch, she should have died, because we've seen Alien, or all the Alien movies, and so uh, I know that at this point forward, it's either dream sequence, she actually died in space, that's what I was thinking we were going for, but no, this scene is quickly wrapped up in the three minutes. And then she comes back too, and now she has the will to live. She had turned off everything, uh, essentially turned off life support. She's just going to sit there and die, but now she's got new ideas. So that was bull. Just padding the story. Got to pad it along because this is the most incredibly basic concept I've seen out of a Hollywood film in some time with so much money wasted on basic material we got characters 
who almost don't exist. No plot, just disaster to begin with through circumstances that are not believable to anybody with a science background. I don't even have a science background. I know my shit. So then we've got her headed over to the Chinese station, which in order for her to get there, she has to uh, put the Soyuz capsule into like landing mode, so it disperses, and she goes shooting out towards this thing, hops out of the hatch, controls finally with a fire extinguisher. She uses a fire extinguisher to move about. You know, the gases come out, she wheels herself in. The Chinese have flew the coop, but there's an escape shuttle left that she suddenly knows how to use because she barely even understood how to use the Soyuz capsule. But I did kind of like how she was like, oh, and the Soyuz, the power button's here. That was maybe the moment of the movie I liked best was her pushing a button. So it's going down. I, I don't know why the Chinese station is sinking to earth and how come before it gets into the orbit or any of that business and she can still walk up to it and everything uh, you know through not walk but travel in space it's got this wind buffering going by like you know Apollo 13 high speed heating up she's surely dead kind of business it, it was just bull yeah you know, this, this is essentially a remake of Apollo 13 with a gross expanding of circumstances, a lack of problem-solving technique, no building up the characters, no getting to know them in their everyday life to understand how they adjust to this, uh, nothing to make them interesting. You can't give a, you can't even, if you had a sequel, because spoilers, Sandra Bullock lives, where do you go from here? Because she has nothing to do. Her character is I like to drive because I was driving when I was told my daughter died. Sucks for you, bitch. So she gets back on the, into Earth, you know, the parachute deploys, lands in some shallow ass water in a lake, I imagine, maybe near China for all I could tell. And she halfway drowns in the process because she thought she could swim in her spacesuit, which mind you, when they initially get out of their, uh, their their spacewalk uniform, they don't have the other materials with them. Like, probably got some tubes. You know, they ha they have that like blue uh, flight jacket kind of material. Uh, none of that. No, she's got sexy underwear and gray tank top kind of thing going on. <sighs> Guys. I was thoroughly disappointed with Gravity. There's very little to talk about other than what you can find wrong with it. There's no enduring quality. I, I'm ashamed that people get so wrapped up in 3D, IMAX, put the two together, space. Now we got Sandra Bullock to appeal to women. This is a giant ass marketing ploy and it worked. Uh, I don't remember how much this movie made. It was either half a billion or a billion. To me, that's approximately the same value. Because it's making money. But the masses are so easy to please. They're like, well, it's got a star I know, and, well, we like Sandra Bullock. So, well, my wife wants me to go see Gravity. I, I guess I can't say no. It's in space. Uh, it's not science fiction. I don't know when this takes place, because they got the discovery out there it, we don't use that anymore when it it doesn't matter when this takes place but it's still not science fiction it definitely wouldn't be in the future as long as the democrats are running things and we don't have a real space program so i guys i know that i'm going to get a lot of thumbs down if you, if you're giving me a thumbs down you've already you did it as soon as i started the video at this point you're thinking you know what, Vaughn does know his shit, that's why I've subscribed to him for four years. That, that would be most of you who have stuck around at this point in the review slash rant. And you probably have some different opinions on Gravity, but I hope that I have presented an argument 
to sway your judgment to my side of the force. The dark, cynical side that sees past the bullshit. That comes out at night and stalks the prey of the filthy bean counters who are ruining cinema. Or something. Do 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 do